morning YouTube or Facebook or wherever you guys are watching this video just want to get you guys uh, a little uh, up to date I've been very sporadic on my filming again because I only have my cell phone so it's kind of a real pain in the butt to try to do all of this uh, farming stuff and film it at the same time but I wanted to give you guys a little kind of a uh, kind of a daily what we do what what we do here in the in Vavau in the bush and here at home on a daily basis um, with all of our farm animals so what what I got going on right now as you can see here we got my two pigs Romeo and Juliet um, we're just getting them fed they really really love the coconut they love the what we call Uto here in Tonga, O'o and Samoan is the flower that grows inside the coconut and then the coconut themselves. They love to eat that so we feed them two to three times a week. Um, not only with the coconuts but we also have our pig slop that we get from all the food that we eat. We select it for the next, we throw all of our food that we don't eat in the pig, in the pig slop and feed them with that probably once a day, once or every every other day. So we got Romeo and Juliet. You can see Juliet right here. She's getting really nice and fat. She bullies uh, Romeo around a little bit, but that's all right. We're getting there with the pigs. Uh, this is our pig pen for the moment. Kind of the old pig pen. What I'm doing is I'm slowly clearing out the side of the house with all of the rubbish and everything you see all this rubbish all this rubbish is going to be gone as well but we're slowly moving out all of the rubbish over on this side right here and what we're going to do is we're going to cement this area and we're going to build a nice clean pig pen for them to stay in so it's clean anytime that we need to spray it down we could just spray it down really quick and and have a nice clean area so step number one in the morning after waking up doing our exercises doing a little bit of research and a little planning is getting our pigs and our animals fed so step one is getting our pigs done Romeo and Juliet so they're done for the morning now it's on to the chickens oh I got here my lovely coconut as you already saw we feed our pigs that but what we do with this is after we husk it and we break it apart, we take it on the inside right here and we scrape out all the meat, this beautiful white meat right here. Coconut is such a beautiful, versatile fruit. The water inside, what I end up doing with the water is I come here and I give it to my chickens. As you can see here, they love to drink that water. And I'll scrape it and then I'll give the I'll scrape it and I'll give the meat to the chickens as well and they'll eat that up all day long. So I feed my chickens twice a day, early morning and then afternoon. And they get that and then if I can find a little bit of grubs with uh, some of the and some of the bugs in the ground or anything like that, especially some of the rotted coconuts, then I give them that as a treat as well. Right here, as you can see, I have I only have three caged at the moment. And this was on as my wife's experiment at school to do this little um, hen house. So we've got three in there. We used to have ten, but then there it was just too many, and they started killing each other. So we had to pull a lot of them out, and we actually have a lot of them going wild around the house. So we have kind of feral chickens that run around that come during feeding time and uh, most of the time they just hang out over here in the garden I don't see any right now but they come and hang out in our garden over here and help eat the bugs and I also have one that is off by on his own he's the little king of the place because everybody else wants to eat him so we keep him out but here's our garden and uh, yeah so back to the chickens Moa and Tonga we're gonna feed them, get them some more coconut water and some more coconut meat to feed them today, this morning. Our vegetable garden that we tend to every morning. Um, in the back, in the back over here, you can see our sugar cane growing. 
Then we've got our bok choy is next right here. We've got tomato, our lettuce and our green onions and our tongue and spinach right here that is on the outside, around the sides. We also have two kinds of tomatoes growing right now. We have the tongue and tomato. I'm not exactly sure what um, what family it belongs to. And then we also have the beef steak brand that I brought in that we're growing. Uh, we also have, we'll come over here a little bit more. We also have see some taro growing. Back behind that truck. We have ginger, and then we've got some lemongrass that was almost dead, but we took it and we replanted it thanks to my buddy EC. So we've got a bunch of uh, lemongrass growing on the side. It looks dead now, but as you can see, the green is actually starting to come through finally. So we water that every day to make sure that it's healthy. And so now we've got a bunch of uh, beautiful vegetables growing. Oh, it, hopefully in the next little bit we'll be able to harvest all of this and start eating some healthy vegetables. One of the main things that I've been trying to do is eat a lot more vegetables and grow our own vegetables so we're not dependent on such a seasonal market downtown. In town, down in town, no, I shouldn't say downtown. As you can see our bananas are slowly growing as well. Some beautiful banana stalks coming in. Now that that's all taken care of, we've got to pick up the kids a little bit later. The kids, then it's going to be off to the farm in Feritoa, where we're planting all of our yams, our sweet potatoes, um, taro, giant taro. We got to pull out a bunch of giant taro because it's uh, they're starting to go bad. So we got to pull those out. We can take those to the market to sell, and we're also going to go over to the cows today. So we'll see you in the farm. So we're finally out in the bush. This afternoon, we've got Fred and Mariani over there. Planting Cafe the Giant Tero. And also, the weeds. Oh, my mom may hate all these. Yeah, these carrots growing right there. Shh, out they pussy hate all of these. Oh, my mom. My. And then what we're doing here? We're taking the stumps, the stalk, and the leaves. Of the bananas, you see here, cutting them up into little pieces. And this is what we're going to feed the cattle with because it's got high water content and high fiber content. And the cattle absolutely love it. Off day, we off day meaning that we don't take water to them, we generally tend to take the, the stock of the banana tree so that they can have some water content with it they can eat some food because again limited space and no running no rivers or lakes or ponds or anything like that to constantly give the cattle water that they need so in order, so in order to help out vary the cost of water and to, driving it up to them every day we do this and it really really helps and it bulks them up so it's been, uh, we've been testing it for about five six months now and it's been really really well done cattle really seem to take it in and really gain weight with it so 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 far so good next stop cattle here with the cattle we got Daisy over there Phoebe and Talia over there that's right you heard me right Talia this one right here is Tiana she's the first of the She's the first of the third generation of the babies that are here and I've got Ferdinand stuck over there somewhere. But uh, so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna move them 
as you can see they plow through that grass quite fast so we gotta just move them now before I get anything about oh you tied your horses or your cattle we tied them because our fence is really 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 old and we have been going through for the last several months fixing it little by little by little by little so until I get that completely fixed and I get five or six strands high of barbed wire and some new fencing uh, we're gonna keep them tied because we went through about a three month period where every week these cattle were jumping the fence or they're breaking old posts or they're doing something and they're getting out and they're the problem is is all around us over the line of trees the line of trees is basically our property but all all around us on the outside of these trees is other people's bush yard or or farmland where they have crops and everything growing so they're they were a little mad at us for having our cattle jumping the fence and eating all of their pro produce all the time. So I've had to tie them, um, but it's just a temporary thing. So this one, Tiana, we're going to move her right now. But uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Just kind of give you guys a, a view of what's going on. See our, our cattle over there. I've got 10 cattle on the left right now. I've got four roaming somewhere else that I need to transport them back here and uh, the goal is in the next four to five years to get them up to about 50 head of cattle if not more uh, I've got one bull right now Ferdinand and I've got the little baby which is running around somewhere that's another bull that will grow up so I'll have two bulls in the herd and the rest will all be female they're very mild tempered with me they're very what they call in Tongan Angelile. To me, other ones not so much, but I can approach all of them, brush them, make sure they don't have any ticks, make sure they get fed properly, and uh, except for this one, Tiana's always been bullheaded. Um, she always likes to run away and jump around. Bishop Fehi can tell you about that. I think he's still suffering from a little bit of a sore shoulder. But yeah, uh, more to come a little bit later. See you right there. Just part of the the banana stalks that we've cut. They love that. She's eating a little bit of the long grass right now. But basically, what this is is it becomes like a almost like celery. Um, when you cut it down and you make it into small pieces, you can really tell that you see the little membranes in it that come with plants that hold a lot of water in it, and it's really nice and fibrous for these animals to eat. This one's a little skinny. She's always been stubborn, but. We're getting her there slowly. We're gonna get her like her other sisters over there, which are nice and fat. But yeah, so that's basically what the the bananas are for. And that way we can keep them really well fed just in case they do eat through most of this grass throughout the day when they're tied up. So until we can get them to be able to roam freely, um, they are limited on the how much they eat per day which is why we bring in that extra amount right there to to add on to their diet. But there you go. That's the end. I guess we can do the bowl of the day or the, the cow of the day. We haven't done that in a long time. So this is Heifer. She hasn't given birth yet. She's getting up there. She's about two years old now. And um, yeah, her name's Tiana. She's stubborn. But she's really, when you get to know her, and you are around her more often she does tend to love you and, and listen and trust you so um pretty much just like her namesake if you're watching this tiana love ya